Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I'm Bob Fowler. What an honor, privilege, joy, and blessing it is for me to be with you. Don't tune out. Stick with me through the entirety of the program. I believe that if you will, you'll hear something, receive something that'll be a blessing and beneficial to you and your life. Every one of us have something that we're believing God to do in our life. It may be for physical healing, financial prosperity, the salvation of somebody in our home. The list is really endless. Strength, joy, peace. I'm struggling with fear, depression, oppression. I need peace, God, in my life. I believe that today God has a word for you. Let's get right into this. We're going to do part three today and our final part and conclude our series of messages, what happens when you do the will of God? What happens when you do the will of God? On the previous two programs, we kind of focused on the cost, the price, the commitment, the tenacity that is going to be necessary for you to hold on to the promise of God and to not let it go, no matter what. We talked about Jesus in the garden. He walked in the will of God. He always did the will of God. His heart was to perform the will of God. But in the garden, he almost leaned to doing his own will and his own desires. And I ask you today, have you ever been there? I know the answer. We all have. We've all been in moments where we feel like giving up, throwing in the towel. The challenge is too great. Maybe you're a young mom or dad and your children are just running around and, and, and you feel like you can't have any privacy and find any peace. And, and you say, God help me. We've all been pressed. But remember, God is there with you even in the pressing. And if you're a parent today, let me just encourage you. My two sons are up in years. They're in their 20s. There were periods where I thought, God, this is too much responsibility for me. Just felt like pulling what hair I had, and I had a lot more hair back then. Maybe that's why I don't have as much now, because I pulled some of my hair out. But whether I did or not, I'm still standing. Why? Because of the care and the provision of God's grace, his strength, and his sustenance. He will sustain you even in those challenging moments. So we focused in the first two programs on the pressure that comes, the attacks that come when we commit to saying, not my will, as Jesus said in the garden, but thy will will be done. But we want to change it just a little bit today. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I have a question for you in relation to this scripture that I just read from the heart and the life and the words of Jesus. How will God's will be done and accomplished in the earth. How will God's will, his heart, his plan, his idea, his method, how will it be done and accomplished here on earth? Well, if you haven't figured it out by now, it's going to be carried out and done by you and I, by the church, by believers, by men and women all across the world who have called upon the name of Jesus and received forgiveness and pardon of sin, but great, but leading from that to a relationship with God. You know, when we think about what Jesus did on the cross, if somebody were to ask you, what does the crucifixion mean to you? If they were to ask me, what I would simply say is, it was the opportunity of a lifetime that God gave me to re-enter into a relationship with him every day through every moment like Adam and Eve had. You know, what they really lost wasn't the garden. What they really lost was that relationship that 
they had with God. So how will his will, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. How will it be carried out? It'll be carried out through you and I. So we need to understand that God wants to use you. Oh yes, you. You who say that I'm not talented, I'm not gifted. If I was like her or him, or if I could, if I had that personality, no, 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 no. You have the right gifting, the right personality. You have the right attitude. You have the right character for what God has called to do in and through your life. Yes, you. You may say, I'm shy. I'm introverted. I can't really talk to people, let alone a lot of people. Oh, my friend, can I tell you something? Before I came to Christ, I was the most shy, non-articulate person. I mean, I can't find enough adjectives to describe how backward I was. I mean, I was shy of people, shy of talking to people, and the thought of communicating something, let alone the gospel, was way out of my reach and not even in my thought. But do you know that <laughs> ah, the Holy Spirit says to all of us in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, now, now, when's now? Now in that moment that you feel like you can't do what you need to do? Now in that moment that you feel shy, you feel introverted, you feel awkward, you feel that the job, the task, your calling, the assignment, the season that you're in is just too difficult. Now, now, God's a now God. Now unto him. You, you've looked at everything else. You've given a report of the reasons why you can't do the will of God. But the Holy Spirit is saying to you now, now that you've listed the reasons why you can't and the reasons that you, uh, I would like to, God, I, my, my desire is to, but. But. You know, but gets in more people's way, doesn't it? Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or even think according or in agreement with the power that is at work within you. What's the power that's at work within you? Well, I believe it's the new nature that he's created in you as a believer in Christ. I believe that it's faith that he's put within you that is at work and growing and being nurtured in your life. I believe it's the Holy Spirit that is desiring to bring all that's being produced and matured inside of you, guess what? Outside of you. Oh, my friend, yes, with you, with me, with people, yes, with man, it may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, we read these words, and do not be conformed. Don't think like the world thinks. Don't think that you can't do something. Don't think that, you, listen, you're a child of God now. You need to start recognizing yourself as a child of God. You're not a better version of who you used to be. Oh, no. You are a brand new species of being. If any man is in Christ, he he is a brand new person, a brand new species of being. You're not a better version of who you used to be. If any man be in Christ, he's a brand new person. Old things are passed away, and behold, all, I love that word, all, all things have become new. So the rest of our lives, we're going to learn who we are in him because it's more than just being forgiven of sins. It is growing, being nurtured, being led from glory to glory to glory, from season to season to season. And we have the Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, and direct us. Can I give you a word today? 
what you're going through is not too difficult with you and God. If it were too difficult, God would not have permitted or allowed it to come into your life. Just because you can't see the way doesn't mean that there isn't a way. Just because you don't know how you're going to navigate your life through where you are right now, and yet you have this dream within you, maybe you're living in poverty right now, but you've seen yourself uprooted and, and, and removed out of that state, out of that condition, and living and existing in a whole do, new different neighborhood and lifestyle. My friend, just because you can't see a way doesn't mean there isn't a way. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Jesus is the way. We don't need to know how to figure out everything. There's another word for someone. Maybe you like to, to have your hands on everything, have to know everything ahead of time. My friend, when you do that, you're not functioning in faith. What is faith? Faith is trusting in God. God, you've given me this word. I know what your will is, but it seems to be too difficult, too challenging. It seems to be impossible. But Lord, I'm going to believe your word. With man, and that includes me, it may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is the will of God? James chapter 1 verse 22, you know, you know let me, before I read this, sometimes people think, well, I got to pray and fast and find the will of God. There are certain things that are the will of God that are just already available for you. And I want to read this in James chapter 1 verse 22. But be ye doers of the word. That word doers means participants and practicers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. We are not called as believers concerning the will of God and the will of God for you is to not be a spectator, but a participator. God's plan for you is to not be in the stands of the arena. God's plans for you are for you to be out on the floor, on the field of the arena. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Now, when I was preparing this, a funny little quote came to me. And it's original with me, so if you don't like it, you can blame me. No one gets fat by simply smelling what's cooking. <laughs> no one gets fat by simply smelling the cooking. You have to eat what is being prepared. Now, I'm likening that to being a spectator versus a participator. I'm likening that to being a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word. Let's look at what the word says. In the King James, we read these words in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. The liberal soul shall be made fat. Ah, oh, some of you think being fat is bad. Oh, when it comes to scriptural definitions of what fat means, you want to be big and fat. <laughs> I, if I can only lose this 20 pounds, uh, I understand. I, I absolutely understand. But scripturally, as a child of God, God doesn't call you to be skinny. He calls you to be big and fat. Come on, somebody. Are you feeling better about yourself already? I am. <laughs> the liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Now, let me read this in the New King James. The generous soul shall will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Now, let's go back to that word fat. That word fat, in the simplest of terms, in the Greek, means 
to be anointed, to be smeared and covered from head to toe with the anointing. What is the anointing? Boy, you hear all kinds of messages on the anointing. It is God superseding your ability, going past your disability, going past your inability, and showing up and superseding what you can do. The anointing. The liberal, the generous soul shall be made fat. Now, generosity is not something that we withhold. It's something that we extend and express and give away. In other words, we do something. You know, I love people. I just think people need to know about Jesus, but we never talk to people about Jesus. We never engage with people. When we go out to the store, we keep our hat pulled down and our dark sunglasses on. We don't talk to the cash cashier. We don't talk to the clerk in the store. Oh no, we go, we get what we want, and then we get back in our car and we get back home as quick as we can. That's not the type of person that God has called any believer to be. I told you before I came to Christ, that's who I used to be. When I came to Jesus, something changed. There was a desire or a passion to talk, to engage, to communicate to people what God had done in my life. You know, at this point in my journey with Christ, I see challenges and obstacles as opportunities. Now, you may not be there yet, but you can. And engaging with people, talking with people, and praying with people has become second nature to me. I'll give you an illustration. Just recently, we had new, new neighbors move in across from our street. I hadn't yet said hello to them. It had been several days, and I went out to put something in the garbage, and I saw them in the garage working on their car. Felt the Holy Spirit lead me and say, this is an opportunity. So I closed the lid of my garbage can, and I made my way across the street, and I said, hi, are you the new neighbors? And they said, yes. I introduced myself. I said, welcome to the neighborhood. Before it was over, they had taken me into their house, introduced me to the other five or six people that were living in the house, spent time with them. They had just had a newborn baby. I had an opportunity to pray with the father and the son, the, the father of that child and his father, pray with them in the garage before I made my way back to the house. Now, there was a time where I'd be nervous about that. I would be worried about that. But I pressed past that. I pushed past that to, to, to the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I just leaned into adversity and said, it's not going to get the best of me. I'm going to get the best of it. And in Jesus' name, I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I did all of this by embracing the power of the word and the spoken word. And now, now it's second nature to me. You see, the liberal soul, the sowing soul, the giving soul, the engaged soul, the participating soul shall be anointed and prosper and be blessed. There are a lot of believers that they wonder why they're not experiencing any more of God than they are. It's because they have not stepped into the will of God and pursued it actively by being a doer of the word and not a hearer only. And so in conclusion today, I want to share with you that if you want all that God has for you, you're going to have to step out of the stands and onto the field. You're going to have to open your mouth and speak what you're wanting God to do. You're going to need to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. You're going to need to be a participator and not a spectator. But you can do it. Why? Because you have Jesus living on the inside. You have the Holy Spirit that empowers you, that gives you the grace and the strength and the ability and will give you the words to say when you need to say them. 
You know, before I talk to people, I don't memorize a script. I just go and say, Lord, here we go. And I am amazed every time at the words that he allows me to speak that are anointed and fat and full of power in a particular moment. Why? Because of me? No. But they were released because I was willing to be a participator, not a spectator. My friend, to do the will of God, to experience what God has for you, what happens when we do the will of God? Oh, my friend, you see the power of God, the provision of God, the blessing of God. You see miracles take place. You see God do things not only in your life, but in the lives of those that he blesses you to communicate with that you would have never dreamed or imagined would happen. See, that's why I can say this life in Jesus is an exciting one because you never know when you're willing to be a doer of the word, a doer of the will of God, and not just someone who reads the Bible and never ever communicates what God speaks or says or does in your life, if you're willing to step past that comfort zone and into the unknown zone, that's where God is. God's not in the comfort zone. He's in the unknown zone. He's in those places that you don't know how it's going to work out, don't know how the provision's going to come, but I know that it's the will of God for me to pursue something or walk towards something. And as you begin to walk, you will be amazed because of the provision of God and his love for you at what he does. Hey, before we go today, I've enjoyed this series. I pray you go back and listen to the previous two. They will be a blessing to you. But remember, it's not just about you, is it? It's about those that you know on social media, those that you have access to, those that you're able to share content with. So if this program has been a blessing, step out of the comfort zone and into the unknown zone because that's where God is. Share this program with somebody today. It will certainly be a blessing to them. Also, go to our YouTube channel at Faith is the Victory Fellowship YouTube. There you're going to find all different types of messages that will be a blessing to you, just like this word today. Finally, would you prayerfully consider, again, stepping out of the comfort zone and into the unknown zone, would you go into the description section immediately after the program and prayerfully consider giving a generous financial seed into this ministry that is all about teaching and preaching and sharing the good news of a life without fear. Hey, I love you. God loves you. And as always, my friend, never, never, ever forget, he is faithful.